Hi, everybody. It's your AP Biology teacher, Mr. Poser. Today, we are starting Unit 5, which is on heredity in the AP Biology curriculum by getting into Topic 5.1, which is on meiosis. And something that you may be able to tell based on the graphic in front of you here um, is that meiosis is a type of cell division. And uh, we talked a bit about cell division in our last unit. Towards the end of the last unit, we talked about the cell cycle and mitosis. Um, and we're going to recap a little bit of that today and see how it pertains to or compares to uh, meiosis and what this is about. So as I was saying before, this is the start of our genetics unit. This is uh, unit five, which is on heredity. Um, and biology offers the answer to these questions that I have posted at the top here. Why are we all different from each other? Why are we different from our parents and even our siblings? Where do differences, genetic differences come from? Well, differences that we're born with, all right? And I already kind of said it a little bit, um, but it's from your genetics, okay? It's from based on the DNA that you inherited from your parents, okay? So we're not all the same as everybody else because we get different combinations of DNA from our parents. All right, in every single generation, uh, the DNA gets shuffled up and changed around and everybody gets a new combination of genes that's never before been seen. Um, and that's where, what we're going to get into this unit. And in order to understand how that happens, we need to understand meiosis first, okay? And as it pertains to mitosis. Um, so here's a review of mitosis and we're gonna be doing quite a bit of comparison here between mitosis and meiosis. Um, mitosis results in daughter cells that are genetically identical. Um, this is a result of asexual reproduction, right? So one cell basically just copies all of its DNA, copies its genome and splits into two, all right? Forming two new cells um, with the exact same genome. This does not produce any genetic variation. Variation means differences. Genetic means, well, in their genes, right? So they're, they're the same cell essentially. Um, and they're both referred to as what we call diploid cells, okay? Um, so this cell right here at the beginning of mitosis is diploid. And then look at these cells at the end are exactly the same. They are also diploid. And I'm gonna explain what diploid means here in a second. Um, but it basically means that there's two sets of chromosomes, but I'll get into that further in a second. All right, but that's mitosis, but meiosis is a different type of cell division that results in daughter cells that are genetically different from each other. And those cells are what are called gametes. All right, so why are we producing cells that are genetically different from each other? Okay, well, we're not on the topic of like growth and tissue repair and that kind of stuff anymore. That's not, that's not in anymore. All right, this is about passing genes down to the next generation. All right, and this is gonna lay the groundwork for all the other stuff that we're gonna talk about over the course of the curriculum, really. Um, but the important thing here, one of the important things here is that the cells that are produced by meiosis are genetically different from each other. They are not the same. They contain different combinations of genes. Um, and those cells become what are called gametes, which are, as we know them, sperm and egg cells. Those are the cells that are used for sexual reproduction. All right. Um, so a sperm and an egg combine and then it forms what's called a zygote and that zygote becomes a new offspring, right? Um, but here's the thing about that. The sperm cell and the egg cell have different genes, different combinations of genes from, uh, from the parents that produced them, right? Um, so then the offspring that's formed has 50% their dad's DNA and 50% their mom's DNA, all right? Um, so the offspring is not the same as the parents and that is absolutely critical, okay? In mitosis, we're just like splitting into two, right? Um, the, the offspring or the daughter cells are exactly the same as what the parent cell was, right? But in this case, the offspring are genetically different from their, from their parents. And that seems super normal, but I just want to emphasize how important that is, how important genetic variation is. Um, so we got, get that through what's called sexual reproduction. And that increases genetic variation by fusing two gametes that are genetically different, creating new combinations of genetic material and offspring. So basically what I just said. All right. Um, now, each gamete has half of the genetic material required to make a new organism. So let's talk human beings here. Um, it's easier to contextualize this here when we're talking about in context of human beings, right? So uh, human cells, all of your, most of your human cells um, have 46 chromosomes in them, all right? Or I should say they have two sets of 23. One set of your chromosomes um, was inherited from your biological mother. One set of chromosomes was inherited from your biological father. Okay, um, so your 46 chromosomes are half made up of combinations of mom and dad. Okay, and then your offspring, if you choose to have offspring someday, are going to be 
uh, are they're going to consist of 23 of a mix of your chromosomes and 23 of a mix of your partner's chromosomes, all right? Um, and therefore, every generation becomes different from one, uh, one another. Okay, so I'm going to introduce to you two new words here that are going to become important when we're talking about uh, meiosis and we're talking about generations here. Okay, meiosis, as we said, produces sperm and egg cells, right? Um, those daughter cells are what we refer to as being haploid. They only have one set of chromosomes and the number of chromosomes in one set in a human being is 23. In a chicken, I think it's like 39 and then like... I don't know. There, there's different animals have different, uh, and plants have different chromosome numbers. But anyway, in a human being, it'd be 23. Okay. And, so, and as I said before, most of the cells that are, you know, present in a human body are diploid, which means they contain two sets of chromosomes. So what the, the type of cell division that we're going to do here, or that we're going to demonstrate, or I'm going to teach you about here, uh, is going to be where one cell with 46 chromosomes produces not one, not two, but four cells with 23 chromosomes. Okay, so once again, just to contextualize this here, okay, uh, mom, mother, biological mother produces an egg cell um, that has 23 chromosomes or is haploid in other words, and dad, biological father, produces a sperm cell that has 23 chromosomes, all right? And when these two fuse together, you get 46 chromosomes, all right? And that is the human, what's called diploid number, or in other words, it's called 23 homologous pairs of chromosomes, okay? So I don't have a picture of one right now, um, but a karyotype is a diagram of the chromosomes that are present in a cell, right? Um, so you have, for example, you have 23 pairs of chromosomes, right? You have one chromosome one that you got from your mom, one chromosome one that you got from your dad. You have one chromosome two you got from your mom. You have one chromosome two you got from your dad and so on and so forth all the way down the line. Okay, uh, so 23 homologous pairs of chromosomes result at, um, from the fusion of sperm and egg. Okay, and that's the that's the context that we need um, in order to start talking about meiosis and its purpose here. So as I put it up here, to produce cells with only one set of chromosomes, meiosis requires two divisions. Okay, meiosis one and meiosis two. So we start off with a cell up here um, that has two sets of chromosomes, and they're also copied, right? We're still going through an S phase over here uh, where we're going to copy, uh, make sister chromatids. We're still going to copy our chromosomes, all right? Um, and then it goes through two divisions. So it goes from being one cell to two cells that only have one set of chromosomes each. And then it goes from two cells to four cells that have one chromosome set each and only one copy of that set. All right, and it's gonna follow kind of the same format that we looked at with mitosis. There's a prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, except this time, like I said, we're going through two divisions. So there's prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase one, and then there's prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase two. Okay, and there's gonna be some key differences here that we're gonna talk about um, in the difference uh, between meiosis one and meiosis two. And as I just said before, meiosis one um, is this division right here going from one diploid cell to two haploid cells. And then meiosis two is going from these two haploid cells with copied chromosomes to four haploid cells with uncopied chromosomes. All right, so uh, here's um, a term that I might have thrown out already, um, but here is the term. It says homologous chromosomes are separated during meiosis one, um, and those are similar chromosomes inherited from parents, right? So um, during meiosis one, okay, one person's chromosomes that they inherited from their mom and dad are going to get split up. Um, so there you go. Um, homologous chromosomes, like I said before, like you have a one chromosome one from your mom, you have one chromosome one from your dad, those two homologous, those two chromosomes, one from mom, one from dad, are what are called homologous, okay? But then during the second division, the sister chromatids, which is what we talked about during our mitosis topic, um, those are copied chromosomes, right? So the chromosomes are still copied and they still need to be split. Um, and that's what meiosis two is all about down here. All right, so let's walk through each of our phases here. Um, we're gonna start with prophase one. All right, and what happens during prophase one? Homologous chromosomes pair and condense, and that's what's called the synapsis. Okay, when the uh, homologous pairs, the ones that inherited were inherited from mom and dad, they come together and they form what's called a chiasm or a chiasmata. That's uh, the plural, um, where they're kind of stuck to each other a little bit. Okay, uh, the meiotic spindle forms, not mitotic anymore. It's meiotic spindle forms. Uh, the centrosomes, those are still the same. All right, those are the organelles that are going to be moving to the poles, assembling the meiotic spindle, attaching them to the uh, or allowing them to attach 
to the centromeres of the chromosomes. Uh, those are still there. They're moving towards the opposite ends of the cell. And then the nuclear envelope breaks down, which is still the membrane that forms the nucleus, right? Um, so that's prophase one. All right. Directly following prophase one is metaphase one. And metaphase one, same kind of thing happens as what we looked at last unit. Um, the homologous pairs line up along the middle of the cell and the meiotic spindle aligns them together across the equator, right? And those meiotic spindles are attached at the centromeres of those homologous uh, chromosomes. Then you probably know what happens next, right? Metaphase is followed by anaphase one um where homologous chromosomes are separated and they're pulled toward the poles um and the sister chromatids remain attached so something to note here look you have uh if you look over here you get if closely you have four chromosomes stuck together right um so then during anaphase one okay you have two pairs of chromosomes now all right but ooh, the homologous chromosomes are separated but the sister chromatids are not separated yet all right so these two chromos uh chromosomes right here um, those are sister chromatids, and they're generally identical. We're going to talk about some circumstances where they're not identical um, in the next topic here, and that's actually going to be pretty big and pretty important. Um, but yeah, the sister chrom chromatids are still attached. Okay, so anaphase is then followed by telophase one. Um, meiotic spindle breaks down, the nuclear envelope forms, new nuclear envelopes form. Uh, the cleavage furrow in animal cells or the cell plate in plant cells forms, and the chromatids decondense temporarily, right? Because we got to go through another round of cell division. Um, but the important thing to note here, one of the important things to note here, the most important, um, is that we're ending up at the end of telophase one. We're at the end of meiosis one, okay? Uh, telophase one results in two haploid daughter cells with duplicated chromosomes. These are haploid cells, okay? They only have one set of chromosomes. They have two copies of that one set, but they still have only one set of chromosomes. These chromosomes over here don't have a buddy. They don't have a homologous pair, okay? How are they going to get a homologous buddy? Well, they got to fuse with another gamete through fertilization, right? The sperm has to uh, fuse with an egg cell, okay? All right, so there are two haploid cells, okay? Now we have to separate out the sister chromatids during meiosis two. So naturally, following telophase one, we have prophase two, Okay, and the meiotic spindle reforms. Sister chromatids are connected to the meiotic spindle at the centromeres. Okay, same kind of deal um, as what we looked at with mitosis during prophase, all right? The chromosomes are already mostly condensed here, so we don't really have to, you know, recondense them here. Um, and there's no nuclear envelope still, so... Uh, there you go. Um, the, the, the spindle just kind of has to reattach during prophase two. Um, during metaphase two, once again, the chromosomes align along the equator or what's called the metaphase plate. All right. The spindles are attached um, to the centromeres. And there's a special protein called kinetochores um, that attach the spindle to the centromeres. And those, you know, you know, those, those get put together. Okay. Um, so that the uh, chromosomes can be separated properly. All right. Following metaphase two, we have anaphase two, which is, you know, you probably predicted, you know, they're going to split. Yeah. Um, and the proteins at the centromeres break down. Okay. So those kinetic cores break down. Sister chromatids are pulled toward opposite ends of the cell. We are on our way to not one, not two, but four uh, cells here, each with only one set of chromosomes and one copy of that one set of chromosomes. Okay, so we got sister chromatids getting pulled apart towards the opposite sides, and voila, we have uh, telophase two, where the spindle breaks down once again, the new nuclear envelopes develop, uh, we once again have a cleavage furrow, which would be in animal cells, our cell plate in plant cells, the chromatids start to decondense, and cytokinesis, the division of the rest of the cytoplasm, occurs here. Okay, um, so four haploid cells with unduplicated chromosomes are present. That's the main goal here. And what are those four haploid cells going to become? They are going to become sperm cells in biological males, and they are going to become uh, egg cell, well, one egg cell technically, um, in biological females. The other three become what are called polar bodies. But that's a whole thing. You don't need to know about that. All right, but the important thing here is that we have four cells that are not genetically the same as each other. They have a they have a shuffled um, they have shuffled genes here. None of them are the same as one another, and they are haploid. That way, 
um, that when one of those gametes combines with another person's gametes, right, you get a random combination of the parental genes. You get a random kind of mix, all right? And we're going to be talking about that a lot more in the next topic. All right, so let's recap here. Mitosis is a type of cell division that produces two identical diploid daughter cells and is used for asexual reproduction. That's very important, right? Growth tissue pair repair, asexual reproduction. If you're a microbe or a particular, you're an aspen tree or something like that, that's important. But when it comes to sexual reproduction, when it comes to producing genetic variation, making everybody different from everybody else, which is a huge topic that's going to become uh, bigger later on, uh, we need meiosis for that. And meiosis is cell division that produces four non-identical haploid daughter cells called gametes, which are sperm and egg cells. And those are used for sexual reproduction, which shuffles up genes from two parents, resulting in genetic variation, right? So you're different from your parents, you're different from your siblings, because you have different combinations of genes um, that you inherited, okay? And those genes are, you know, what make you you, right? Uh, so uh, both meiosis and mitosis are forms of cell division that involve a spindle, all right? So some key things to note here um, is the, the purpose of meiosis versus mitosis, that's different. Okay, asexual versus sexual reproduction, growth and repair uh, versus, you know, genetic variation and uh, sexual reproduction. Um, the number of cells, you got two cells in mitosis, you got four cells in meiosis. They're identical in mitosis. They're non-identical in meiosis. That's going to be important stuff for you all to know. I promise you it's going to come up somewhere. Um, but And they also both use a spindle apparatus. Okay, um, meiosis involves two cell divisions, meiosis one and meiosis two, and I'm going to try and run through each of the phases once again here. Prophase one is when the spindle forms, the homologous chromosomes connect to the spindle, uh, nuclear envelope breaks down, centrosomes go to the poles, uh, metaphase one, homologous pairs line up, anaphase one, homologous pairs split up, and the sister chromatids remain attached. Okay, and then telophase one is where we end up with two haploid daughter cells with copied or duplicated chromosomes, right? So they're still haploid, even though there's, uh, there's one set of chromosomes. They don't have a homologous buddy. There's two copies of it, though. So that still makes them haploid, all right? Um, let's see. Then meiosis two, we got four phases, PMAT, PMAT. Uh, prophase two was where the spindle reforms. The chromatids reattach. Metaphase two, the sister chromatids line up. So in phase two, the centromeres break down and the chromatids are pulled apart towards opposite sides of the cell. And then finally, telophase two is where we end up with four haploid cells with unduplicated chromosomes. Unduplicated uh, meaning that they only have one set of chromosomes and one set of chromosomes only. That, therefore, they are ready uh, to be able to fuse with another gamete and make a new diploid cell with a brand new combination of genes. Uh, also, the nuclear envelopes form during telophase two and the chromatids uh, decondense, right? Because remember, chromosomes are really just packaged up DNA that's been wound up. All right, that is it for this video. We're going to get more into genetic uh, variation and diversity in our next topic video. Let me know if you have any questions, and we'll see you next time.